Again, thank you so much for joining. Today, we're going to talk about specific types of loan products, uh, in particular, reverse mortgages, HELOCs, and loan modifications. So this is just an overview of, we think, the essentials that you need to know about these products and how you can be better prepared for them. So first, we'll talk about reverse mortgages. And in preparation for this uh, class, I talked to a reverse mortgage counselor. Um, and so she gave me a little bit of insight and, and discussed with me the challenges of these kinds of products. Um, so we'll kind of go into what it is and what you need to know. They're kind of a, their own beast. Reverse mortgages are complicated and uh, they're complicated for everyone, not just for the notary. So let's kind of get into it. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat or just wait until the Q&A section at the end of our, our conversation. So what is a reverse mortgage? Reverse mortgages are a loan that's secured by a person's residential property, so just a home loan. This kind of loan enables a person to use the equity, which is the unencumbered value of the property, to pay off all loans and liens. Basically, it's an equity line where repayment is deferred until the borrower dies, sells the property, or moves from the property. And this kind of loan is targeted towards seniors. Uh, typically people who cannot afford to pay their mortgage payments, maybe they're on a fixed income or a life event occurred where they can't pay their mortgage payments. This allows homeowners to convert the equity in their home into cash income with no mortgage payments, so no monthly mortgage payments. Sometimes they'll get a lump sum from this transaction too. This loan is going to help seniors who otherwise would not be able to pay their home uh, mortgage payments and stay in their home. And these kind of loans are federal, federally insured loans. The process of getting a reverse mortgage is a lengthy and complicated one, and it can take up to a year to obtain a reverse mortgage, sometimes more. Um, it's a long process. In the process of getting the loan, the borrower must receive counseling from a certified Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Counselor, or HECM. You've probably heard of HECM. Um, they provide like one-on-one -on -one classes and then issue a certificate to the borrower to proceed with the loan process because it's a complicated one. So they actually, these borrowers, they get one-on-one -on -one counseling from a counselor. Uh, just a quick note, in the United States, there's only 700 counselors, roughly 700, which is an extremely low amount. Uh, it's a very difficult test that they have to take every three years. Um, my friend, who is a reverse mortgage counselor and a notary, she uh, is, has to study an entire month before the course. So there's very few. So they're in high demand. In order to get a reverse mortgage, you have to be 62 years of age or older. Um, sometimes with reverse mortgages, power of attorneys are used. Perhaps one of the signers is incapacitated or is unable to sign for one reason or another. And a lot of times the entire family is involved in this kind of loan. So it's not unusual for you to communicate with perhaps a, a son or a daughter regarding the reverse mortgage. The signings can take longer than normal refinance home loan signings. Um, so you really need to be prepared as a notary on your end for the signing to go as quickly and as smoothly as possible. And we'll kind of go into how you can do that today. The, the FHA raised the lending limits for reverse mortgages. And since, as we all know, interest rates are low, we will see an increase in these kind of loan products. So no doubt you've probably gotten uh, requests for reverse mortgage applications, which we'll go into in a little bit, or home loans. Um, I wanted to make a quick note. Uh, we're in an atmosphere where there's a lot of work, right? Maybe more work than there are good signing agents who can handle it. But when interest rates rise maybe a little bit or, or the market kind of levels out, you might have to take reverse mortgages. Whereas right now you might only take refinances and maybe HELOCs, which we'll go into a little bit as well. But if it slows down, like when I first started to be a notary 10 years ago, I had to take reverse mortgages. There might not have been any other work for me that day if I didn't. So it's important to know these products. I want you to be able to say yes to everything. 
and get your hands on every kind of product. So it's important to know the basics. So let's talk about the process for us and the different kind of products that you'll receive. You might have received a request for a reverse mortgage application or disclosure signing. So some lenders will hire a notary to help the borrower complete the initial application and to collect a scan of the documentation needed to proceed with the loan. So if you're surprised at the fee being low, I'll explain why the fee's low for these, which it generally is. Um, I'd say anywhere from 40 to $50, maybe 70 if we're lucky. Um, the reason why is the lender pays out of pocket for this service. The lender's thought behind that is that the notary is going to accept the low application fee with the hope that when final docs are ready, they will accept the loan signing for a higher fee. So they like the same notary who's gonna do the final loan docs to do the application as well. That's what they want. That's their thought process behind the fee being super low. On these products, um, signing agencies most likely make no money on the applications. The fee is so low, it's so low. Um, and it's because they're hoping that you'll do this and then later on you'll get the loan signing at a higher fee. They also want to develop a rapport between the notary and the signers, because as you guys know, we're probably the only people that the borrowers see physically. So they want to have that rapport. And because the signers are generally elderly or over 62, um, they, they want there to be a relationship. Now the applications are generally 80 to 150 pages. There are, in my experience, never any notarizations needed. So you're literally just helping people sign a set of application docs, no notarizations. Sometimes the page count can be upwards of 300 pages and it'd be kind of alarming. You're thinking this is just an application and it's 300 pages, but it's actually only about a hundred of those pages that, that need to be signed or have signature lines attached to them. And we'll kind of go into what that's gonna look like, um, but only those documents need to be signed. There's gonna generally be in that big set of 300, uh, a page marker that says borrower's copies and everything after that is just a copy. But I'll have notaries say, I can't do the signing, it's 300 pages. I'm gonna have to print twice. You actually don't have to print twice. And it's a lot easier than they look, just the PDF looks. Um, there's generally on, whoever hires you on their website, you'll see a list of required items that need to be collected for these kinds of products. Um, you need to collect those items and provide clear scans. Some of our clients do not want cell phone pictures. So if you're gonna use your cell phone like me, I don't use my scanner, even though I have one, I use my phone and I use tiny scanner. Um, they can con convert images, scans, pictures um, into beautiful PDF scans. So that's what I would use. Now, when scheduling the signing, it's important to reference that list of items needed because you're there to help them, but you want to prepare them. That way, when you get to the signing, they're not now looking for the items that they need scanned. So on the scheduling call, it's probably a good idea to tell them I need a copy of your ID your social security number, your mortgage payments. That way, when you're there, you're just taking the scans. Um, I've done many application signings and uh, generally if I don't prepare them, I'm helping them look for those items and I'm there maybe 30 minutes more than normal. Uh, another kind of interesting note about these is sometimes the lender asks the notary to provide an informal inspection of the property and answer some basic questions related to the condition of the home. And in a minute, I'll show you a sample of what that um, inspection might look like. Um, you might not get a FedEx label or UPS label with these packages. A lot of times the lenders just want an original or a scan, not an original, of the loan application. But every lender is different. Sometimes we have one lender that they want the scan and then they'll provide the label after. So they'll only provide the label once you've provided a scan. Um, but it, every lender is different, so make sure to ask. Okay, so this is uh, what that 300 page PDF might look like. If we look here, I have a sample of the PDF. This is what it would look like. So if you look here at the very top, it says there's 229 pages in this PDF. There's this place marker that will say signed by borrower. So everything from there to page 91, they need to get signed. And everything else is the borrower's copy. So you only have to have the borrower sign the docs that follow that signed by borrower page. And in this case, when this is the situation where there's these place markers, you don't have to print a second set of docs. So you're just gonna print this one set once, give the borrower their copy. 
this important, I'll have a lot of notaries take the assignment, look at the docs and then say to reassign. And when I explain, you're actually only signing like 80 pages, probably less than that, they'll accept the signing, um, but it can be kind of alarming. So don't ask to be reassigned before you look at the documents because it might be something different. Okay, so more examples of uh, what you might see on a reverse mortgage application. Um, this is a sample of what might be on our website, um, but pretty much any other company will have something like this. Um, this company requires a scan of all of these documents. So driver's license, social, mortgage payment, insurance. Um, and and they can, in this case, they can take like nice clear pictures. And then to the right, we have a sample of the inspection by the notary. So it's an informal inspection, um, but you're gonna, when you go into the house, in this case, you're gonna look if there's excess debris inside and outside the house, check that, water stains, chipping. Because this is a government, government federal insured loan, they need to meet certain qualifications. Um, so if the house has uh, damage that they don't want to secure with a, a loan, they might not give the borrower that loan. There are some things that can be uh, completed before the loan signing, and there are some uh, maybe issues that can be completed after the signing, uh, but they need us to kind of be their eyes and just take a quick note of this information. You also have to ask sometimes questions like, are there smoke detect detectors, carbon monoxide, um, water heater, double strap, stuff like that. So it, this is a really unique kind of product. We're not actually doing notary work, right? We're not notarizing anything but we're helping the lender complete a set of docs. Okay. Well, sorry about that. Okay, so just to, before we wrap up the applications, it's important to note why we're doing that. Most of the time, it's because they don't want the borrower to have to find a way to print and find a way to scan. Because we're dealing with um, uh, seniors, some, some of them can and cannot print, scan, and collect all those items, and they need help doing it. So that's why we're doing it. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're doing these assignments. You wanna be patient and focus on the borrowers and less on yourself because they do require a little bit more attention. Okay, so now we're at the final loan doc. So when, you, when the process is finally complete and docs are ready, the final loan docs, um, they'll hire us. And so hopefully you did the application and now you're gonna do the loan signing. It's really important for a notary to familiarize, familiarize yourself with the documents and be able to explain the paperwork in general terms. Um, do not overstep, don't offer advice and assume what a form means. We really wanna rely heavily on the lender for any questions or concerns a borrower might have. When I talked to that uh, Heckam counselor, she kind of gave the advice of don't talk too much, right? Focus on the docs, let the borrowers look at the docs, keep any commentary to a minimum in these situations. And we'll go into kind of why in a minute. Plan on being at the signing 30 minutes longer than normal. So if a refinance takes 20 to 40 minutes, that's what I tell borrowers, plan on being there an hour to an hour and a half. Sometimes it's quicker, every borrower is different. And that's uh, when I talked to the reverse mortgage counselor, she mentioned that you'll get a 90 year old who is super sharp and will sign the docs very quickly and is totally with it. Then you'll get someone else who's maybe younger who has a lot of trouble. So you can't really predict, um, but just plan on being there a little longer. If you're doing a reverse mortgage, I would say don't double book yourself. You know, Don't overbook yourself too soon. Give the borrowers time. If the borrowers end up being unhappy about the loan, they're gonna blame the notary. Um, we're the last portion of the process, right? And sometimes, most of the time, we're the only people they meet. And because it's kind of a unique loan, um, sometimes uh, children of the borrowers might be upset that their parents got a refinance or a situation like that. Um, if they're upset with the loan, they're going to say they felt hurried, they felt pressured to sign. So when on these signings, keep the conversation to the minimum outside of what is your responsibility. Don't rush the borrowers. It's very important because they're gonna be upset and they're gonna try to drag everybody that was involved in the process down. So professional, positive communication and let the borrowers go over the docs. Do not rush them, let them give them time. Now on the back end, say you completed a reverse mortgage and you're updating our website or anybody's website, take good notes. 
and communicate with the company that hires you. If their children were present, take a note of that. Um, if the borrowers were happy about it, take a note of that. If they were upset about the loan, if they had questions, if they could or couldn't get a hold of their loan officer, communicate all that information. It will come in handy if later on down the line, the borrowers say they were, they were pressured to do the signing. Not saying that you're gonna pressure them, but they might blame you, even though it might not be your fault, right? We're just notaries. We have nothing to do with the creating of the loan. Um, but communicate huge on these ones. And remember that every signer is different. Like I said, you might get someone who's super with it. You might get someone who needs more time to be patient and communicate. These are older people who need that respect and that, um, that patience. So keep that in mind. Reverse mortgages, how I think of it is just remember it's not about you. So you might have four signings that day. You might want to give that other one away in order to accommodate these borrowers. Um, some notaries, like I've said before, might choose not to do reverse mortgages. But if you're just starting out and you just want to be able to never say no, that's the way Coast to Coast does business and that's how we've been successful, accept these signings. Um, they're generally not horrible. They're pretty good. And you'll make you know, uh, connections with, with new uh, lenders and escrow companies and, uh, and borrowers as well. So here are the tips that the reverse mortgage counselor told me about. When they're getting counseled, these borrowers, she told me that she tells them to look at these three documents. So she directs them to look at these three documents. So it's not a bad idea to pull these forms out and put them at the top of the set. That way they're the first forms that the borrower gets and let them look at them, call their loan officer and understand them because these are the real meat of the loan. So the first form is the settlement statement. These are just samples of what that form looks like. This is that breakdown of any fees, credit, credits, charges, payoffs of the loan. So have the borrower look at this. They're gonna also see if any money is coming back to them. So in the case to the right, they're getting 8,000 along with not having to pay their monthly payments. And to the left here, they're getting 5,000. So important document, they have a settlement statement or that HUD one form. The note, the note is, uh, in my opinion, the most important document for the borrower, regardless of uh, product. So give them the note. This is going to show their interest rate and the amount of the loan. So give them the note. Very important. This is a sample of what it looks like. Um, most of the time, reverse mortgages are adjustable notes. Um, so sometimes when, if a borrower say unhappy, they're going to say they didn't know it was an adjustable note. So give them this document. You can't go into the whys and hows of the loan, right? But you can show the what's and the where's. So have this note right, right at the very top. And this is the note continued. This is a long, it's a longer form. Refinance notes are maybe what, two, three pages. This is about seven or eight. All right, and then there's the home equity conversion mortgage or, refi or reverse mortgage, federal truth in lending closing disclosure statement. So again, this is gonna break down all the information they want to know about the loan. Let me show you what this looks like. This is continued. So it's gonna have the fees and charges and all of this information, including the money that they're getting back. So you wanna show them those three documents. They need to understand those. Okay, so here are just some quick tips. We've already stated a lot of them. Take your sign with time with the signing. Do not rush the borrower. Um, if the borrower has questions, do not attempt to answer them unless they're the where's and the what's, right? If it's why's and how's, that's not your place. Call the loan officer. Do not provide more information than what's on this docs. Don't give them your advice or your opinion. It's not your place, right? So you don't have to do that. Um, on the actual documents, have the borrower sign exactly as the signature line dictates and ask the company that hired you if the property's in a trust. We had an issue this week. Um, they didn't, they weren't clear with the instructions and the borrowers were signing in a trust and the borrower did not sign trustee after their name. And that ended up being a problem. Every lender is different, but get an answer. Don't make an assumption when it comes to trust verbiage. You're always going to make the wrong one and then you were going to have to get it re-signed. And with reverse mortgages, that funding date, it's critical. So there'll be a super rush urgency and you'll have to get out there within the hour of getting that call to fix your mistake. So get an answer before you proceed. And just like with any loan, you need to triple check your docs, right? So as they're being signed, check them. Before you uh, leave the signing, check them again. 
And then before you ship, check the docs. Um, if not, funding delays can occur. Uh, the situation that happened this week, it was the last day of the month. Borrowers were leaving for Iran for two months and we had a critical time crunch. Um, our notary was not happy about having to get the corrections, but that's what it takes to get it funded. And if you miss signatures, um, don't have them signed according to the signature line, they're gonna consider that a notary mistake, right? So you're gonna have to get it done, fixed at your own cost. And urgency is huge. They're gonna want it fixed now. So keep that in mind, slow it down, get it done right the first time. Okay, so next up, uh, we're gonna talk about home equity line of credits, HELOCs. Um, they're different than reverse mortgages. Generally, HELOCs are great products. I know notaries whose business is comprised solely of HELOCs and they love it. They're super quick at the signing. Borrowers are generally really happy to get them because they get to do something fun with the money, maybe fix their house or invest in a new property. So HELOCs are different. But let's talk a little bit about what they are. So it's another type of loan that's secured by a borrower's home. A borrower can take out equity or a credit line if they have equity in their home. So equity, just a little refresher on what that is, it's the difference between what is owed on the borrower's mortgage loan and the home's current market value. So if the borrower has paid down their mortgage loan enough to where the value of the home exceeds the outstanding loan balance, a borrower may lend a percentage of the difference or equity to the borrower. So generally HELOCs are a small set of loan docs and they have a lot of the same documents common to refinance, except for the note. There's not gonna be a note. Instead, HELOCs have a home equity line of credit agreement. Um, for the most part, there are no escrow docs needed for these kinds of loans, only loan documents. So you're not gonna see documents from a title company. There's maybe sometimes a settlement statement, which is that breakdown of the fees, um, but generally these are a really awesome set of loan documents, super easy, and it has just the bare minimum of what's needed. This is just a sample of some documents you're going to see specifically for a line of credit or a HELOC loan. So instead of a note, there's the home equity line of credit agreement. Um, it's generally one to seven pages long. Uh, the, the loan may include a line of uh, credit advanced request. So if it's a line of credit or like a revolving line of credit, the borrower can choose to withdraw funds. And if that is present, they need to decide how they want that money. Some lenders actually have you put in the amount they want to withdraw as well, just depends on the lender. And there may be a home equity line of credit writer to the deed of trust. So remember the deed of trust is a pretty general document and writers kind of specify the loan. They make it a little bit more personal to the borrower and the type of loan. So this is a, perhaps a, a HELOC. So it's gonna have a HELOC writer to the deed of trust present. Okay, let's talk about loan modifications. So what is a loan modification? If a borrower falls behind on paying their mortgage payments, they may be at risk for a foreclosure, right? So some lenders will offer a loan modification to help the borrowers keep their home. A loan modification is an agreement between the borrower and the lender to change the original terms of the loan. So if they wanna change the loan amount or the length of the loan or the interest rate, they might give them a loan modification. These are really tiny sets of loan documents, very small. Typically two to six signatures are required and maybe one to three notarizations. Um, sometimes these documents are shipped directly to the borrower. You don't have to print anything. You just have to show up and notarize. Um, although they are small, if they're not signed property, properly, a full re-sign of all the docs may be required. So like in a refinance, if you miss the errors and omission form, you miss a borrower's signature, which happens. You just have to get that one form signed most of the time. You don't have to get the entire set signed. With loan modifications, you have to get the entire set signed. Now, it's a little set, so you're only doing maybe two to six signatures again, but it can be a hassle, right? Borrowers expect you do it right the first time and we're good to go and then they have to meet and have a second appointment. So it's small, but errors can be huge and require an entire re-sign. So on the scheduling call for these, it's really important that you verify that all the signers that are listed on the order and on the docs are gonna be present. If one signer is not present, the lender may not approve any additional trips. Um, 
it's a, it's a kind of a sad reality, but many of the lenders that are associated with loan modifications, because they're, they're not making money because of the closing, the fees are incredibly low and they're very tight when it comes to approving fees. So communication is critical. Do not make an additional trip without getting approved, without somebody from the company that's hiring you saying, yes, you can go out to see the second person and you'll get a second trip fee. Um, we have weekly calls with our clients on these and they will dispute even the tiniest fee. So it's important that you, there's a lot of communication, full disclosure get everything approved that you do, because if not, you may run the risk of them not approving that additional fee. It's not fair necessarily, because if you're like me, I wanna get it done. And I, I don't care how I get it done. I'll, I'll do a second trip and I'll even take the pay, you know, not approved in order to get it done. But we want you to get paid for what you do, right? So always get that approved. Uh, a quick note about signing. The forms need to be signed exactly as the signature line dictates. So if the signature line has a borrower's capacity like trustee or it has an AKA, they must sign exactly as the signature line dictates or they may reject the document and a whole re-sign is needed. And dates need to be clear. So you might think, oh, the borrower kind of crossed it off and dated it, it'll be fine, it won't be fine. So very clear, few pages, make sure they're done perfectly. Um, this is the main form that's in a loan modification. Like I said, the, there can be two to six pages, um, but this is the main form. Uh, this is the Home Affordable Modification Agreement or Deed of Trust. So this details the borrower's loans, loan terms. I wanted to show you the signature line example. So this is an example. It'll have Virginia Ann White, AKA Virginia Anna Cherbell. And so they don't want me to just sign my name, Virginia Cherbell. They want me to sign the entire verbiage. So make sure to do that. And the dates need to be nice and clear. Don't have them pre-printed, have the borrower print them. Then there's the notarization here. So this would be filled out just like any other notarization. Uh, there's sometimes an additional page at the end of the lo loan modification uh, deed, and it's for the bank to fill in. So you don't have to have this signed. You don't have to have this notarized. This is for the bank. And how do I know? It says lender's acknowledgement. We're not the lender, right? So that's not for us. You can skip it. Don't cross it out like I did here. This is just to show you that you do not have to fill this in. All right. Okay, so let's wrap up what we've learned today. Remember our job as a signing agent is to guide the signers through the loan docs. We offer general descriptions of the forms and ensure that they're completed properly. We can answer the what's and the where's of a borrower's loan terms. If the borrowers need further clarification on the why's and the how's of a specific loan term, they need to call their loan representative. So we don't wanna overstep. Now this really applies to reverse mortgages, it applies to all of them, but reverse mortgages just because they're complicated loans. And just in general, borrowers and their families may not be thrilled about having to get a reverse mortgage. So you want to cover your back. What's and where's, not why's and how's. And then just another note, ask the company who hired you for help. So communication is really critical. So in our portal, update, add a note, uh, communicate with the person who hired you, anybody you can get your hands on, communicate. Um, don't leave documents unsigned or incomplete without communicating to the contracting company. So take good notes. Update the signing right away. Put your notes in. Um, it's going to cover your back and it's going to cover our back. And that way, if something happens or if something goes wrong, we have something that we can bring to our client. This is just a notary 101. Triple check your docs. I triple check my documents every single signing and I've done thousands of signings. You never stop triple checking. So as the borrowers are signing, you're making sure they sign properly. Before you leave, tell them, give me just a minute to check through your docs. And most of the time, they're really happy that you do. It gives them a lot of confidence, like, oh, this person knows what they're doing. And even if you miss something, don't be embarrassed. Say, oh, I missed this. And then they're going to be happy that you triple checked. So check again. And then right before you ship the docs, go through them. Make sure you have everything. Binder clip them or put a rubber band. Um, do not shuffle them all together. They need to look good when they arrive. We had a four loan signing last week 
and the docs came back a mess, all mixed in together. Multiple loans are hard. You have to work really hard to be organized and keep everything in its place or you're going to mess up. It's just the way it is. So binder clip them, keep them together. Maybe buy folders for yourself. You don't need to give them to the borrower, but buy folders for yourself that you can put the documents in or just put them in a FedEx label. Uh, through FedEx, you can order supplies. You can go into the store and grab some supplies, put the docs there, keep them nice and organized. And these are people's lives, right? These are their, their home loans. So treat those documents with respect because they're not done once you're done with them. They have a whole life on their own. So you wanna make sure that you, uh, you are organized and neat and triple check, very important. And just in general, remember that you're there to provide a service. Our job is not always easy. There can be a lot of pressure. We're on time restraints. Um, if you're making a lot of money as a notary, you're booking yourself pretty solid. But remember that it's not about you, right? This is about a service that you are providing. So regardless of the type of loan, whether it's a HELOC, which is super easy and fast and kind of fun. I love HELOCs. I've had HELOCs done in 15 minutes. Um, or reverse mortgages, where you're going to be there for about an hour and a half, and, and you're going to develop a real relationship with them. Show patience and kindness to your signers. Um, it's our job to, to do our job right and to make people feel comfortable. Every signer is different and has different needs. I, I can't say blanket statement, every signing will take 30 minutes because every signer is different. What their experience has taught them may be different. Some people are very stressed out about getting loans. Understandably, if you've ever gotten a home loan, it can be an incredibly stressful process, but you can be the person that makes it a positive experience. You're generally the only person that they meet. So put on a good face, right? Be positive and be prepared. And you can turn a possibly stressful or negative experience into a positive one. Uh, before I close it out, um, we have a video on HELOC signings and loan modification. So feel free to check them out. I'll send you guys the link when I send the course materials out. The HELOC signing is for, we create it for one of our largest clients. So if you watch that signing, you're gonna do a perfect HELOC signing. And they're super easy and fun. Um, I work full-time in the back office. And if I have a HELOC close to me, I'll grab it because they're easy and they're fun and it's a good way to make money. So check out those two videos and they'll help you walk you through all the common errors and issues.